Hello, my name is Dr. Christina Lampe and I'm working at the University Hospital, the Department of Child Neurology and Rare Disease Center in Gies in Germany. I see mainly, I see a lot of rare disease patients, so all different diseases, but we are very much focused on lysosomal diseases and my major patient group are mucopolysaccharidosis. I think actually I'm working in the MPS field since uh, more than 12 years. So I have a lot of network in, uh, with other physicians and uh, whenever there's a suspicion of MPS, a lot of physicians send patients to me to make further tests and diagnoses. I'm quite connected to the MPS Association Germany, so I have an overview of about 50 MPS2 patients. And actually, I was, before I started in the lysosomal field, I made my residency as a surgeon. So I'm actually a, a certified surgeon. And by chance, I went into the field of lysosomal diseases and the MPSs. And I was so um, excited about this field that I stayed there. And now I'm taking care of lysosomal patients and especially MPS patients in a very long time. My first experience <laughs> was when I um, entered the, um, the metabolic unit of the Children's Hospital in Mainz. After having um, been a surgeon for several years, and I've never seen any um, patients like that. I have to say, I, I saw these parents and, and these families and also the children that I, I really um, started to, to, to really love them. And this is why I'm still working with MPSs and uh, not in the surgical field anymore. What I would say to colleagues, um, why they have to learn about MPS is um, very clear. In some MPS types, are there is a treatment available. This is um, the first thing. The second is that um, these are um, multisystemic diseases, and you have a lot of chances to improve their quality of life. And also, you can really um, uh, cover the life-threatening disease complications. But these are progressive diseases, and the sooner you make a diagnosis and you start even symptomatic treatment and physiotherapy, um, speech therapy, they need hearing aids, corsets, orthosis, um, glasses, whatever. The earlier you start treating the symptomatic um, features of the disease, the, the better is the quality of life of these patients. And they have a diagnosis and they know what they have to, to, um, to do. But the major problem is in the first years of life, the the signs and symptoms are so unspecific. It's inguinal hernia, umbilical hernia in combination with some recurrent infections of the airways or the ears and mild developmental delay. So nothing very special, very typical for children in kindergarten, at kindergarten age. So it means the symptoms are very unspecific. And, and with, by time you see more specific symptoms like the contractures, the coarse face, but unfortunately this is when the disease is already um, in progression. Whenever you have a child and you have the impression something is wrong, um, because there are some unspecific things, but the combination might lead to a rare disease, it is better to send the patient to a, um, a specialized center. In Germany we have a system that children have to to be visited at certain times in a regular follow-up by pediatricians. And actually, whenever they see that there's some developmental problem, severe infections, hernia, or contractures, or whatever, or um, um, even macrocephalus, um, then they refer to, to, to us for further diagnostics. The major problem in um, delayed diagnosis and progressive diseases are that you without having the chance to treat signs and symptoms of a multisystemic disease. You have irreversible organ damage. Another problem, if you don't know about the disease and what um, you have to, to take care of is also that 
you have a lot of mistreatment, so a lot of surgeries, for example, that are not needed in that disease, or you have um, some medication that is um, not needed in that patient or even dangerous. And um, also the insurances and health um, are sometimes not paying rehab or, or physiotherapy if they don't have a diagnosis. You cannot stop the storage um, completely, but at least you can um, do something for um, against the symptoms. This is um, why you you have to diagnose and to start immediately um, to to have regular follow-ups to detect life-threatening disease complications like heart involvement, pulmonary involvement, or CNS involvement, but also the quality of life-reducing disease involvement like um, the skeletal problems, the hip dysplasia, the um, carpal tunnel syndrome that you might sometimes see in these patients. The advice I would um, give to colleagues if they um, have an MPS2 patient, I would actually go to, to some educational trainings that are offered like webinars or um, websites uh, to get um, proper information about the disease. I would always go to, to, um, to uh, to ask a colleague that knows um, um, about MPS. I would make a network. Um, actually, it's something I, I, um, I'm um, discovering very often. I have small hospitals. They have a suspicion of MPS. They send me the patient. I make the diagnosis. And actually, I, I ask them whether they want to take care of this patient afterwards when we have a diagnosis and if they want to do all the tests that are necessary or if they want me to do it and send the patient then back. And I, I see the patient only every six months or once a year for second opinion. And um, I think this is the best way to connect, to build up a network to inform yourself and then in collaboration with someone who is experienced to take care of these patients because then you learn quite a lot and you will detect more and more patients because you only see what you know and you know only if you if you learned about that. Well, if colleagues um, ask me how to get information or um, um, training material um, uh, um, about Hunter's um, uh, syndrome, I would for sure um, always recommend webinars that are sometimes very interactive. I would also um, go to the usual literature in PubMed, but also there are some very useful websites like huntersyndrome.info where you can have get a lot of material also in PDF to download, but also podcasts and more information about Hunter's syndrome.